Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson in E2. In the last lesson, we created the CRUD application. Uh, here, as you can see, the index action index, we can create post. Post description and of course an you know, auto ID of one. Okay, as you can see, we have created, create, inserted this data into the table. Okay, we can update these as well if you want. So in today's lesson, I am going to. Uh, I'm going to authenticate, I'm going to give access control, I'm going to allow only the people who are logged in. See, as, a, as of right now, I am not logged in, but I can create and I can update posts. So I want to allow only for people who have all already logged in to create posts and update posts. So to do this, we have to change the access control. Uh, so let's start, get started. Uh, let's go and go to our post control this is the controller that that we have over here so in the post controller in the behaviors we have to add access and pass an array First, we have to give the class access control class name. Next, we have to only we are only alarming another array create and update. create and update actions to be done by authenticators users so next is we have defined the rules open up another array and inside that another array and we will give allow equals true give it a role sorry to give it a role for authenticated users only the add symbols uh, stands for authenticated users only so let's check it out save and refresh okay syntax error works Oops, I forgot the question mark. Uh, sorry, comma here. And I will get another error as well. I ah, know, right. Okay. So make sure you add the filters access control as well. If you don't use this, you will get an error saying that app controllers cannot find access control. See, we are using the access controller, so we have to include it up here. So use the filters access control. Okay, uh, let's check now. Okay, let's try to create we are not logged in so let's try to create as you can see it automatically redirects to the login page because we have not logged in. If logged in we cannot create any post so if we log in using admin admin we can create posts and of course we can update only because we are logged in let's log out again and go back and we'll try to update a record without logging in. As you can see, it again redirects to the login page. So that covers access control. Actually, it doesn't cover access control. It's actually a simple rule that we can write uh, in order to make sure that only create and update actions can be done by authenticator, authenticator users only. So. The last lesson I created the CRUD application, but I didn't go through the actions that were created and I didn't explain. So, uh, when we are creating a CRUD application, we create a couple of actions the action index, the view action, and the create action and update 
delete are the actions that we create. The view action is called when we click on the view icon here. As you can see, the view action is called and an ID is passed. This ID is be this ID is captured using these parentheses and and the record that is corresponds to this ID is being searched. Find model. Find model function. Uh, we pass the ID in the find model function. And find model function is right down here below. In this find model action, fi find model function, uh, we go to post post class, the model class that we have we generated. In this class, we are going to find one find one record that the ID is equal to the ID we passed. If it's null, if it's not null, we will return the model. If it's null. Uh, the page, the request page does not exist is thrown. An exception is thrown. For example, I don't rec have a record with the ID of hundred. As you can see, the page does not exist because in here the post cannot find an I find a record with the existing uh, with the past ID. Okay, let's go back to one. So that is the explanation of the action view. Next. Let's go to action create. Action create, you go to post, you create button and, and the action create is called. Again here, we create an object of post class. We create an object of this class. And we check, and first of all we check whether the but submit button is clicked. The request is a post, we check the request is a post. If so, we are going to save the model uh, and if we, are, if we are going to try to save it. Since we are not yet uh, click the create button, submitted button, else we are going to render a view file. The view file exists in the views folder, post folder and create.php file. This file is rendered right here. Okay. So we can change, uh, as you can see this title is create post. And I'll edit this and say create post now and refresh this so to show you and there you go. And here and into this create view file we are going to pass, a mod, pass the model that we created the object of post model we are going to pass it and in this view file we are going to render another view a partial view form here from here is the form loaded so the form is loaded by this view file and this view file has the model object that has been passed by the post controller this model and we are going to text input and text area and author ID. Okay, so I am sure you are familiar with these classes as well, the form group class, uh, because this is also a bootstrap class. Uh, if you don't know about form groups and how to type form or forms in bootstrap, please take a look at my playlist on bootstrap 3. Uh, so, from this form, Let's assume that the user submits this button, uh, submits this form. Then, then a model is being loaded. If it's a request, then the model load function is executed and the model save function is executed. The model save will send the record to the database and store it there. And we are going to redirect to the view file, redirect to the view file, and we are going to pass an ID of the created record so that's the create an update action update we are going to action update also gets a passed id is passed for example let's try to update this and id is passed this id we are going to find the model again with this function with the use of this function and we are going to if the submit button is not clicked we are going to 
render the update view file. Okay, and the delete of course it's simple. We are gonna find the module which has this ID in it and we are gonna delete it and redirect back to the index. Okay, that's the explanation of the actual controller of a CRUD generated, CRUD generated controller. Okay, in the le next lesson we are going to install the ye advanced template. Uh, it's kind of uh, it's easy to install, but the advanced template has a lot of functionality which we should go through by step by step. So stay tuned for that and take care. Please subscribe, share my tutor, share my tutorials, and comment, like, give your reviews. Thank you very much. Then have a good day. Bye.